What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out AMD's most powerful iGPU to date, the Radeon 890M. Now if you're not familiar with this new iGPU, that's totally fine. It was actually just released a few days ago at the time I'm making this video. But basically what we've got here, at least on paper, is AMD's fastest iGPU. It's based on RDNA 3.5, we've got 16 CUs up from the old 780M's 12 CUs, and a clock up to 2900 megahertz. And these new integrated graphics are actually available in two of AMD's brand new Ryzen AI chips, the AI9 HX370 or the AI9 HX375. We've got the AI9 HX370 here in the brand new ASUS ProArt 13, which is definitely turning out to be one of my favorite laptops right now. I will have a full review on this coming up. But this is packing the Ryzen AI9 HX370, and with this we get 12 cores, 24 threads. They have set these new Zen 5 chips up a bit different. We are working with some efficiency cores, known as Zen 5C cores. So we've got 8 of those, 4 regular Zen 5 cores, up to 5.1 GHz. But the most exciting thing here, and what we're here to test, is the new AMD Radeon 890Mi GPU. This is based on RDNA 3.5, we've got 16 compute units, and it clocks up to 2900 megahertz. Along with this, it's paired up with 32 gigs of LPDDR5X running at 7500 megahertz. And I've got a lot to test here, we're going to run some benchmarks and kind of compare this to the older Radeon 780M, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, jumping right into it, as you can see we've got that new Ryzen AI9 HX370 with Radeon 890M graphics. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 7500 megahertz, and I've allocated 8 gigs specifically for this new iGPU. Now again, we've got 16 CUs here, so 16 compute units versus the older 780M's 12. This will require a little more power, and I've done some testing so far in another video. We were at 28 watts with a boost up to around 32. In this one, we're going to be taking that wattage way up. There are diminishing returns, but at the time of making this video, we don't really have any way to kind of tune and tweak this GPU right now. So I can't specifically set clocks on it or anything like that. So we're going to take that TDP up as high as we can go. That way we can get the maximum clocks out of both of these. Now I'm sure with the performance we're going to be seeing in this video, down the road just a bit, we're going to be able to get the same kind of performance at a lower TDP. But again, right now there's really no way to kind of modify what's going on here with this new 890M. From GPU-Z, we'll run a quick render test. And this does go up to 2900 megahertz. You can see GPU power draw. Now this is actually combined with the CPU. So it's not specifically just that iGPU. I'd say in total at 100% utilization, this GPU could probably pull around 38 watts. So let's just say I've got this system right now set at a 28 watt TDP. It's really going to have to divide all that power up between the CPU and iGPU. So in order for me to up the TDP on the system, I'm actually going to be using G Helper. This is a really awesome application for these ASUS devices. Fans and power. From here, we can go up to 75. But unfortunately, BIOS won't let us go all the way up to 75 continuously, even though, you know, we've got the SPPT here and the FPPT up to 75. Really, I can get a continuous 70 watts out of this system the way it is right now, which is more than enough. And again, there are diminishing returns with this iGPU, but there's really no way to tweak and tune those clocks right now on the 890M. I've tried a bunch of different applications, and there's not much that I can do here except for take the total TDP up to get those higher clocks. So with that out of the way, now it's time to get into some testing, and the first thing I did here was run some benchmarks. First thing we've got here is Geekbench 6, using their OpenCL benchmark. We scored a 43,744, and if you take a look over here with that Radeon 780M, which was the last generation with 12 CUs, that one's coming in at 31,000. So just from that OpenCL benchmark, we've definitely got a jump over that 780M, but just to give you an idea here, we're sitting somewhere in between the Radeon RX 5500 and the GeForce GTX 1070 right here with the OpenCL benchmark scores that they've got over on Geekbench 6's website. Next up, 3D Mark Night Raid coming in a little over 35,000. And the highest score I've ever been able to get out of the Radeon 780M was actually with the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. And with that, we scored a 30,336. So again, nice little bump here in synthetics. 
with Fire Strike, we got a 9,072. And the final one I ran here was Time Spy, and we actually broke 4,000 with this Radeon iGPU, 4,104. And one of the highest scores I was able to get out of that 780M was 3,351. So yeah, looking pretty decent with these synthetics, but now it's time to get into some real world gaming and see what this thing can really do. First one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. Take a look in the top left hand corner, we've got Afterburner running. You can see at the very bottom there, our CPU package power is right there at 70 watts. Of course, this is overkill for a mobile device, but you know, I'm actually really excited about seeing this in mini PCs down the road. But with Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, FSR set to performance, we usually get an average with the Radeon 780M of around 72. With this system, we actually managed to get an average of 92 FPS, which is really impressive for an iGPU. That's a pretty good hike over the 780M, but another thing we gotta keep in mind is the CPU side of this thing is actually based on Zen 5, so we are getting better performance there also. Either way, coming out with a 92 FPS average with Cyberpunk 2077 on an iGPU is pretty amazing. Next up, we've got the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1080p, low, and of course we could be testing all of this at Ultra, but it's still an iGPU at the end of the day. You really do have to lower those settings down to get the maximum FPS out of it. We definitely wanted to keep that 1080p resolution, and at the end of this, we had an average of 87. I also wanted to test out one of my favorite games, and you might notice up in the top left hand corner, it's locked right there at 58 FPS. I'm not sure if this is a bug with the driver or my game capture or something weird going on. I know for a fact that we could run this game at a constant 60 just taking a look at the way everything's going. Unfortunately, it was just sitting right there at 58 no matter what I did. Tried resetting it, going down the low just to make sure, but right now we're at 1080 high settings. Here's Horizon Forbidden West, and no matter what iGPU I've run this on, we never saw a great performance until now. 1080p, low settings, FSR is set to balanced, and we are using AMD's frame gen from the settings. That's really the only way we can get this over 60 in an iGPU at 1080. Of course, dropping it down to 900p will net us a lot more, but at 1080 with these settings, we're seeing an average of 73 FPS. I don't personally play Fortnite, but I still wanted to throw it in here, and I actually thought we'd see a little better performance out of this. We're at 1080 high settings with no scaling, so we're at a true 1080p here. We're looking at an average of around 79 FPS. I mean, it's definitely playable, but again, I really thought we'd see better performance out of this game. Going back a bit to GTA 5, we're at 1080p, high, normal settings. This was basically how it was out of the box when I booted the game up. We're looking at an average of around 128 FPS, and I've extensively tested this game on the 780M with these same exact settings here. Kind of went into everything with exactly how I test on the 780M. On most of those systems with 6400 megahertz RAM at around 65 watts, we're only seeing an average of around 93 FPS. So we've got a really nice jump when it comes to this older game. And so far with everything I've tested on the 890M, we've been seeing some pretty decent performance. So the next one I wanted to go with was the built-in benchmark for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 1080p, balanced AMD frame gen on. By the end of this, we did see a pretty decent average FPS here and a pretty good 1% low. Average of 125 FPS, and our 1% low was 63, but this isn't a massive jump over the 780M at those higher wattages. I kind of expected to see a bit more. And with this last one, we're also going to be using AMD's frame gen because it is built into the game, something I personally like on these little iGPUs. No FSR, we're just using frame gen. By the end of my run here, we had an average of 92 FPS. So there's no doubt that the new AMD Radeon 890M can outperform the 780M. Even at lower wattages, it definitely outperforms it. We've got 16 CUs, and the architecture is based on RDNA 3.5. Will we see this iGPU in an upcoming handheld device? Personally, I do think so, but it's not going to be in the same APU package, because what we've got here is the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX 370, 12 cores, 24 threads, 
AI doesn't make a lot of sense for handhelds, and they knew that with the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. And with that chip, they cut out the AI engine, kept the same RDNA 3 based iGPU. It is the 780M, they just didn't call it a 780M in that. And, you know, they kind of rebranded the chip. With the new chip specifically for powerful handheld devices, I think they've learned a lot from the original. And with these new Zen 5C cores, I think we could get by with another 8 core, 16 thread APU with this 890M iGPU. So we'd have four of those Zen 5C cores, which are lower power cores, but they still perform pretty decently, keeping the overall power draw down on the CPU, allowing more for that GPU. But at the time of making this video, nothing's been officially announced. I'd still love to know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, do you think this is a big enough jump over the uh, 780M to add to a handheld? Would it get you to buy it? Or would you wait it out for something a bit more powerful? Let me know in the comments, and I will have some more testing coming up with these iGPUs. Still waiting on a few third-party applications to be fully compatible so we can really tweak and tune this thing. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.